Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. Let us take a moment now to appreciate our patron saint, he who pities the fools and the predictions of pain he brings with the force named for him, Mr. T. Yes, it is time once again for our annual look at a Mr. T-related comic. And in case you missed the year-end recap of 2020, I have sworn that every year from now on, I will be reviewing something Mr. T-related. Movies, A-Team episodes, his animated series, lamps featuring him. The sky is the limit, even if B.A. Baracus won't be getting on no plane. That being said, we are still several years off from that. I want to finish off all comics featuring Mr. T before or moving on to other media. Mr. T and the T-Force actually lasted 11 issues, and we're at the halfway point of that. There's also another Mr. T graphic novel that I need to cover as well. But in the meantime, let's get caught up, shall we? Last time on Mr. T and the T-Force. Things actually took a bit more of a grounded turn after the Incan cyborgs and killdozers of the first several issues, with Mr. T now dealing with about three or so plots simultaneously. The first was acting as a landlord for an apartment building, doing odd jobs for everyone, helping a woman whose welfare checks were getting stolen by a gang, and finally acting as a bodyguard for an up-and-coming boxer, Slam and Sam, who was getting harassed and attacked by the fans of the champ, Kevin O'Malley, who feel he's unworthy of taking on the middleweight champion. Because as fans of this boxer, the last thing they want to see is Sam getting punched by their hero. Let's dig into Mr. T and the T-Force number six. <laughs> Cover's pretty good, featuring Mr. T just punching a dude without even looking at them in a boxing ring while advancing on someone else holding a baseball bat. And I love that look in his eyes like he's about to take that bat and cram it down the dude's throat for even thinking of using it on him. Unfortunately, despite the advertisement up top, my copy did not come with a free Mr. T trading card. I'd be mad at the eBay seller, but let's face it, if the trading card had stayed with it, it would have raised its value past even copies of Action Comics. Comics number one. Easy prey. Well, yeah, again, the only guy who stood a chance against Mr. T so far was an Incan cyborg. And even then, he needed to use drugs to disorient him. Of course these goons are easy prey. We open where we left off last time, with Mr. T escorting Sam towards the boxing ring while the crowd jeers at him. Also, the title of this issue, Duck and Cover. It's true, Mr. T's punches are like getting hit with an atomic blast, and duck and cover is about as effective for it. We may not make it to the ring, Mr. T. Don't worry, brother. We'll make it. You know, here's another aspect of this that's weird when it comes to these people trying to keep him from getting to the ring. They're in the arena. They had to pay money to get these seats. Are you telling me they paid that much just to not watch a boxing match? I love this guy who speaks only in little emojis. Skull and crossbones, nuke, hangman, and... Sick face? Dead face? Not sure. And it's not swearing. There's another guy nearby whose swearing is censored in the standard way. What they don't realize is that that guy was actually warning them about pirates who planned to nuke the arena, hang all the survivors, and anyone remaining would die of radiation sickness. Sam thinks they should wait for backup from the cops, but Mr. T says to just put his hands on his shoulders while he clears a path. As demonstrated when someone tries to attack Mr. T, 
and he just gets kicked in the face. Man, this is nuts. I never thought I'd have the fight out here. Don't give up. We ain't through yet. Give up? I haven't done anything yet. Exactly. Just keep doing nothing. Otherwise, you'll get in my way. Sam doesn't want to punch people in the audience, but Mr. T points out that he's just defending himself, which I don't think people can begrudge when this dude is coming at him with a beer bottle. Fortunately, the champ finally comes down and tells the audience to knock it the hell off already. We was only looking out for your interests, champ. He don't deserve to get in the ring with you. If we do bad things in your name, it'll only make people love you more. Well, I think he does belong in the ring with me, or I wouldn't have chose him, would I? Look, champ, I think we know better than you who your opponents should be. After all, we make good decisions, like trying to assault someone with a beer bottle. As such, they finally let him through as the announcer explains the match. Tonight's featured bout, 12 rounds in the middleweight division for Flim Flam Boxing Organization World Title. Because nothing shows how serious and legitimate your organization is than calling it Flim Flam. Like, even if Flim Flam wasn't slang for con, it just sounds goofy on its face. And thus the match starts and we get a few pages of it, Mr. T giving advice to Sam along the way. Not much to really comment on, but what's interesting to me is that they decided that for the actual match, they'd wash out the colors and almost make it look like it was done by someone else. Not sure what the idea behind this was. Maybe trying to emulate the lighting of a famous boxing match? Anyway, what's more important is that Mr. T notices Lewis, the grandson of one of his tenants, who's apparently into some drugs, is actually in attendance, standing near the back of the arena. If it isn't Mrs. Thibodeau's grandson, Lewis, hanging out with some slippery characters. Well, sorry, Mr. T, but once the boxing match is over, it's time for the oil wrestling match. Unlike one would expect in a fictional boxing match, they go the full 12 rounds. No knockouts. The judges score in favor of O'Malley, though it's close. Still, O'Malley's a good sort and admits to Sam that he won the fight despite what the judges said. Though he seems to jokingly suggest there won't be a rematch because the next jury might not be as sympathetic to him. Outside, Mr. T says goodbye to Sam while he goes to see Lewis. Lewis, why do you run when I want to talk to you? Look, I just didn't want to hear you singing about mothers again, okay? You listen to my song and like it, fool! Who's this You know, you got a lot of mouth, and I got a lot of fists for your mouth. He's my grandma's landlord. Thinks he's a cross between a teacher and a preacher. Yeah, specifically this preacher. <laughs> Kick ass for the Lord! I don't allow no crack dealing in my building. You should have more respect for your grandmother. Working on a song for that one too. Admittedly, hard to find dignified words that rhyme with wrinkles. This sucker took your stash, didn't he? You owe us, man. And Mr. T moves so fast that he's up close and punches this guy. Super speed, adding it to the count. <laughs> you irritate me when you pull a gun on me. Then I take my fist. And put my initials on your brain. Let him go, Mr. T. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Yes, it does. You keep bringing that stuff around my building. Lowers the property value. Mr. T's trying to build some equity, sucker. Plus, I hate to see you hurt your grandma. Don't you hurt your grandmama. It's like punching out a llama. Dang, the mama song only took an hour. Why is it so hard? And I guess he just let them go, because we cut to the next day, where we continue Mr. T's bodyguarding duties of the woman and her welfare check. However, as they're walking along, soon a large gang of goons start following behind them. Now we got a convoy. We got a great big convoy trucking through the night. That's gonna run them suckers over! They finally tell Mr. T to hand over the check or they'll kill the two of them, all of them pulling out guns. Mr. T, why don't you call your friends on your wrist radio? What for? They ain't bulletproof. But Mr. T could certainly be bulletproof. We won't know until they actually shoot at him, so I'm not adding it to the count just yet. Fortunately, he doesn't need to call for help. Justice, the kid from the first few issues who was informed by Mr. T of the crack baby fool, spots this. He doesn't want to get shot, but doesn't want any harm to come to our hero, so he runs off to get help. In the meantime, Mr. T is worried not for himself with the bullets, but for Emma, the woman he's protecting. She's bound to get hit no matter how he handles this. Fortunately, Justice has found help. Sam and O'Malley are nearby and start punching the crap out of the goons. O'Malley even offers him a job, but Mr. T politely declines as he tosses a guy around like he was an alligator. The goons run off, leaving behind their guns. What are we gonna do with all these guns? Modern art sculpture? 
The police are buying old guns. The money can go to the community center so the kids will have activities to keep them out of trouble. Unfortunately, one of the activities is how to join a gang and buy guns. After Emma thanks Mr. T for his help, and he refuses payment, Justice talks with Mr. T, who thanks him for the assist. Later, we catch up with Lewis and... this drug dealer guy in sunglasses. Lewis wants him to give him some crack in advance of payment, since he has a good track record. The guy thinks Mr. T will just take it away and gives him a gun, telling him to shoot Mr. T if he gives him any crap. But first, you gotta get down and lick my shoes. Huh? You hear me. I gotta know you're serious. You already owe me money. That's right, you gotta get serious. I was not expecting to read someone's fetish material in a Mr. T comic. Mr. T approaches. Lewis, what if your grandma could see you now? Put a cushion under your knees or something, fool! You could hurt yourself doing it like that! The drug dealer pulls the gun on Mr. T, but it goes about as well as you'd expect. I don't like it when people pull guns on me! Now if I see you around here again, I'll hurt you! This is my talking fist. His name is Knockout. Do you want to hear Knockout speak? The dealer runs off as Mr. T wants to know why he runs away when he wants to talk to him. You ain't my mama! Okay, maybe I won't be hanging around your building no more! Oh dear, what'll he do without you hiding drugs in his apartment building? Oh no, so terrible. You're a bright young man! Why don't you make something of yourself instead of hanging out with trash? Save it! I'm sick of your lectures! You don't know how I feel! You don't know what I gotta do to survive! Well, apparently it involves a lot of shoe shining with your tongue. You think it's easy to just drop what I do and get a job? Yeah, fair enough. I'll stay out of your way, and you stay out of mine! You know where I am, Lewis. If you need help. And so our comic ends with Mr. T standing in a gradient void as he puts on a t-shirt that says, Positive State of Mind. As if this was his proper superhero garb. You know, he's bulkier and not a super genius, but I kinda wish now there was a Mr. Terrific movie starring Mr. T. Anyway, this comic is pretty decent. Like I said, we're back in more grounded stories than how we started the T-Force, but we get a lot of action from Mr. T, plus the boxing match was fairly well put together. The boxers and check stealing storylines seem to be wrapped up, while the stuff with Lewis is probably going to continue in some more issues. Otherwise, Mr. T remains awesome, and this comic, much like with Superman, shows how there can still be danger and tension, even if the hero seems invincible. Emma was at risk of getting killed by the gang, and Mr. T likely would not have been able to save her. Just because the hero is indestructible doesn't mean innocents are too, and you have to wonder how our hero is going to save people even with their incredible powers. The artwork is fine, like I said, few spots of iffiness like when the drug dealer pulls out the gun. Lots of action, though that change in coloring was just weird. Before we head out, let's check in on the letters page again as someone asks why Mr. T carried a camera instead of a gun in the first few issues. The editor responds that Mr. T knows from experience that violence isn't the answer, that recording evidence for trial is superior. Mr. T uses his head, not his fists. Okay, between this and the last time claiming he has no superpowers, I'm beginning to think the editor of this book was reading a completely different Mr. T comic. Anyway, next time we're gonna go way back to only the second episode of this show. We're going back to Dooms 4.
trying to stay in shape is hard work. Hello my friends, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching!